hashtag warning, warning for like clients. If you get a nutritionist that does that for you, run away, cancel the program, run. Like just that is the worst thing you can do. You never, never, ever, ever, ever want to eat below BMR. So I'm Legend Angus Beef here and a huge welcome to the Anti-Diet TV channel. Big love and fist bumps to you if it's your first time here. Otherwise, chances are you're a returning subscriber catching part four of this awesome video series I've been in the works of making. Um, life's been a tad crazy currently, hence um, a few weeks between the episodes. Uh, but either way, exciting news to be uh, dropping part four. This has been wonderful to edit and piece together. This has all stemmed from a wonderful, about an hour and a bit long interview I did with um, a fellow legend in the health and fitness game, David Mifsud, who runs uh, Body Shapers and uh, Day One um, over in uh, Sydney, New South Wales. But um, in part four, what we're gonna be covering in this in terms of as David asks me questions, you're gonna be getting some serious fire and real talk from me as I cover some basically, yeah, like insights and some professional advice in regard to the dangers of eating below your basal metabolic rate. I covered navigating losing weight without typical dieting measures. Um, I covered where and how long to incorporate reverse dieting for in your journey and how to actually know whether you're ready and in a good state mentally and physically to actually enter into a calorie deficit. So you're gonna be in for some awesome real talk. Um, and uh, please, 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 if you have any questions around anything I'm gonna be covering um, in terms of the real talk in advance, um, yeah, just like the comments below. I'd love to give you some extra value and help you out where I can. Um, and uh, huge encouragement if you haven't seen the previous episodes yet, probably go back and watch them. And then once you get back to here, hey, strap yourself in and let's uh, have ourselves to sync time together. Uh, big love, thanks for being here, and I hope this is of value to you. I'll catch you uh, towards the end. Some people, they eat one meal a day, they snack all day, and binge at night. I mean, if you're doing that, even if someone gives you a, a calorie goal, it's pretty difficult to stick to it yeah. because you make yourself super hungry all day. If you're eating high, you're eating snack foods, they're generally very calorie dense, so they're easy to over consume your calories. And then if you end up at the end of the day stressed, tired, and hungry, you're not gonna make the best choices. Mm. So I think, I think a lot of what Angus said there, Marla, was to help kind of get you to that calorie deficit um, in, in different ways. Probably the last thing I guess, uh, the comments there. I was uh, just gonna say to touch on to touch on her to touch on her question or comment, um, where where also like, I don't know how her experience was with what she just said and like yeah calories govern everything regardless of whether you track them or not. But um, I'm a huge mistake someone can make is um, and even I, I even see some nutritionists and other people in, in the game that are coaches do this, is they put calories too low way too quickly. Um, in other words, going what's referred to as way too aggressive. Um, so it's like if someone is ever aware of uh, what their BMR is, for example, um, which I know isn't basic knowledge, but like let's just say their base metabolism rate, um, a lot of... <laughs> approaches I've seen are where someone is eating pretty much at their BMR or below and that should represent huge red flags warning warnings for like clients if you get a nutritionist that does that for you run away cancel the program run like just that is the worst thing you can do you never never ever 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 want to eat below BMR so it's like it should be relative to be able to see what happens with the body's initial trends in response to it and then adjust accordingly so that as we as we touched on before um, that whole idea of having real estate so that way it's like you keep calories as high as you can ideally to trigger the results you want so that as you get leaner, you have way to move forward. Like with my last prep that I did, I remember I started off at about 3,300 calories um, as my deficit and that's because I spent a decent amount of time at a high maintenance to get everything up to optimal function, which meant that as I got leaner, I was able to function really, really well and have all my biomarkers in check and I finished my prep on like 2,500 which for most guys, that's the start of their deficit. Yeah, that was me, like dick skin lean. We're talking like shredded uh, for my last comp, part of my French, but like ridiculously lean. I got the leanest I've ever been. And that was the extent of my calories, like 2,500, I didn't need to go below that. Uh, meaning that coming out of that once again, easy because I didn't punish myself into the depths of just like BMR intake or whatever. So yes, calories matter, but if you yeah. abuse them, you know, tread carefully, let's just say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll stick with lifestyle lean versus 
big skin lane in terms of the yeah we'll have to split test that one without <laughs> it's such a wrong foot yeah that was, it actually ties into what my my sort of last question was going to be angus because i think it's something that a lot of people have experienced is the the never-ending diet where it's like i'm always like if you're always on a diet something's going wrong you should always be on a diet in a sense of a, a big deficit and you touched on it there about the um the impact of constantly dieting constantly having your calories really low and how you, I like I like the real estate analogy, like you never have any real estate sort of thing, and so you, you're constantly fighting on. And some of you guys might have heard Angus say that, like he would start a diet on 3,300 calories and probably like their jaw hit the floor, like what the hell? Like that's so much food. Like and, and again, a couple of things, he's a guy and, and other stuff, but um, this is you can describe it, Angus. But when you actually have intentional periods of not trying to lose weight, how good is that for your metabolism? To, to do that and not try to constantly die or how bad is it to constantly die i guess mm. um yeah, yeah yeah so it's like what we're talking about here is what's technically referred to as periodization so the the ultimate way to live life guys is where you spend the least amount of time dieting as possible or the least amount of time in a deficit as possible so that way you can do your metabolism due service um and sort of like be in better sync with your body and how you're meant to live so understand that when you diet and when you go really low in calories and stuff like that, that will always, always, always be met with adaptation as your body fights to preserve its energy stores to get you off of what you're doing. So if someone's just consistently starting a diet, oh, I can't stick to it, shit, overfeeding, rinse and repeat, this is what's gonna then have your body picking up on well, little signals, or the fact that it's just like going through these periods of just like famine and restriction, overfeeding, it starts to pick up on it, that it's happening quite often. Um, that's then where someone will be met with, uh, I guess the scenario where they gain weight really easy and they find it harder to lose anything. Um, and that becomes evident more and more as those patterns go on over time. So when I'm working with someone, it's not uncommon for someone, for example, to be, have been on and off dieting for decades. They haven't been dieting for decades, they've been on and off trying for decades, yeah? If someone had been dieting for decades, they'd be fucking dead, right? In other words, like, yeah you would have just run everything into the ground and you'd have no anything left and you'd die. But it's like, if you've been on and off trying for decades, that's the difference and that's where many people are. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like, the best thing that someone can do, if that's the case, isn't to just jump into a deficit again. That's where I'll actually call the shot of basically doing like a reverse diet with someone um, to then be able to sit at maintenance for a while and fucking enjoy life without dieting for a little while before going into a deficit again when it's actually warranted. Otherwise, it yep. would just be met with the same shit again. And they'd be like, oh, but counting calories didn't work for me, Angus. It's like, because you shouldn't have done it yet. Like, the body wasn't ready for it because of how much it's just already been doing that. If it, 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 even though you might not have been tracking, but it's like, you've pretty much still been doing the same thing. The only thing you're doing while tracking is that you're calling the shots for how you want to create that deficit. All these other diets have just been rigorous forms of already trying to be in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a brilliant little point there, you know, to almost wrap it up on. I'm like, if, if you, I feel like it's, it's almost like if you tried every diet and none of them worked, it's probably because you weren't ready to diet on any of them. Like, mm. That was probably why nothing got you the results. It wasn't the thing you did, like you said, it's, it's, I counted calories, and it was like, no, you just, you probably were in a state where you shouldn't have been doing that in the first yeah. place. And you didn't have, like you said, a coach in place to give you the hard, honest, the answer that people don't want to hear sometimes, mm. even though ironically, giving them an answer means they're going to eat more food. You think they would want to hear it. Something we don't want to hear it because we want to we want to get leaner and, and get to that result. So mm. yeah, it, it's a it's a hard one. Um, and I'll, I'll go on one more one more point. Karen, we've got Kaz saying such great information. You're welcome, Kaz. She said amen. Guys, I'm, I'm probably letting you scrub up in a minute or two. If you've got any last minute questions though, I'll give you a chance. Now, anything that come to mind? Us chatting about nutrition or fat loss or lifestyle or anything. Angus again has tons of knowledge. So last chance. But I think the thing about that, Angus, while well, I give people a second, is. It, it, it's hard to, even though you, you see the signs that you shouldn't be dieting, when you, and we've both been there, when you're not happy with how you look in the mirror, it's really hard to, to, to have the courage to make the decision that I'm not trying to get that weight off right now. Because on some level, if you say I'm not just going to diet, you're actually saying I'm okay with how I look, almost. And, and sometimes that's really hard, and there's this, there's, this, there's this push and pull of one part of you is like, but I, but I don't look like the, the person I want, I don't like how I look in this outfit at the beach. Um, but the other part's like, but I, but I probably shouldn't be dieting. And I, again, I don't have any perspective on that, but it, I, I personally think it's one of the hardest things to, you know, actually accept. Like, I need to, I need to not diet, which means, yes, I'm not going to lose all this fat right now. I need to do that and accept where I am for a period of time if I ever want to.
fun to lose it. Mm. It's not easy um, for, for, for a lot of people to, to have that awareness. So don't get me thoughts on that. Oh, for sure. Well. I think that's more so just a means of like, um, how does it say it? Like, if, yeah, like, because it, once again, like it's not common knowledge to recognize the signs. Like a really simple way is just to see like, if you're stressed out of your mind, if you're consistently hungry, if you think about food all the time, if your recovery from workouts is shit, if you have no energy throughout the day despite what you eat, if your digestion is shit, if you struggle with sleep and you have no libido, don't diet. <laughs> like, simple. Like, just look that at it from that way. So it's like, you use that as kind of like a checklist or whatever and create like an acronym around it or something. But it's like, that's the stuff that I look at. And if any of those or most of those are basically shit, the worst thing that you can possibly do then is to try to diet. So it's like, that's when you should see, right, okay, cool, I need to come out of that, I need to increase my calories, I need to basically get rid of the perceived stress that my body is holding on to that's making me feel that way, and then look at those same checklist items, but then see how it's improved. And if it's all improved, awesome. You've got a good ground to start, maybe going into a deficit, test maybe a 10 to 15% one, assess your scale weight averages and how you feel over two to four weeks. If adherence is good and it's going well, Fuck yeah, time to commit to a proper deficit block. And then that's where you can start doing the stuff that me and Dave have talked about. But it's like, yeah, having the having the the self-control, if you will, or like the the mindset to be like, okay, cool, like if you ultimately do have those checklist issues going on, uh, for the sake of looking after your body long term, don't try to force dieting because it would just make those checklist items worse and make it harder for you later on when you eventually do do the stuff that I just said. Um, like an example of where things got really, really bad for someone when I took them through this stuff is it took about eight months to get us to a position where we were ready to start in a, in a proper fat loss deficit. And then because we did it that way, she fucking killed it. Like it was the easiest fat loss she's ever experienced. She's like, oh my gosh, Angus, how, how, how am I losing weight eating this much? This is ridiculous. And it's like, we did that pre-work. So it's like, see this pre-work as like a diet before a diet, if you will, like if you love the term dieting. So it's like, it's just the pre-work to set yourself up to have a chance to win it later on. Yeah, yeah. Really good way to put it, man. I um, I really think that was, that was so-and-so, sorry, I'm just going to comment. This is great to hear. I hate dieting. It's depressing. It never worked. Yeah, and, and I think this stuff's probably probably really good to um, start considering Cap. If, if that's, um, so Cap was the common Angus just said, yeah, I hate dieting. It never works. So some of the stuff might be might be exactly what you needed to hear. Again, it's not always the, the thing you want to hear, but it's sometimes the thing we need to hear. Um, to do it in the right way. So that was um, that was awesome, Angus. We went a fair while. We got a lot of thanks coming in now. Thank you, thank you, guys. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I think we'll um, we'll leave it there, Angus. Uh, where would people find you if they want to learn more about what you're talking about? Uh, um, some of the stuff you're sharing us is getting on Facebook. The you have Inst- you, you still get the Instagram pretty hard, don't you? What's Instagram these days? Haha. <laughs> so Instagram, I've started to have more fun on. If you guys want to check out my Insta, it's called Angus underscore Carbs Captain. Um, because <laughs> I love the fact that there's so much stigma around carbs. So yeah, I changed my name to that. Otherwise, um, check out my Facebook, Angus, and then Fairbairn, F A I R B A I R N, and you'll instantly see what I'm about with my color photo. It's a huge fuck dieting across the front. Um, so awesome way to just get some free value guys um, and um, yeah obviously I model what I'm all about so if you're just like oh I wonder if he's actually legit yeah obviously yeah check it out and obviously free value to help you with your journey for sure now you, you, you're doing more with faith at this stage especially those photos behind you mate uh, you and shredded so uh-huh. you can't fake it too much so it's was Angus underscore carb captain yeah, that's the Instagram handle, man. Thanks, I, uh, I love it. Some, uh, I put in there on your photo in our group, you're the meme, meme expert, and I'll see that if I go on Instagram, I'll see your your meme level 100. Yeah, awesome, lovely. guys. Lovely. Give Angus a big thank you, a big round of applause or a clap, and uh, we'll leave him there. And yeah, really appreciate it for the time, man. I think it was really good. And you know, a few more thanks for coming in, and people saying thanks for keeping it real. Angus, you definitely keep it real. There's, uh, there's no doubt on that. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you for another video tomorrow on the next day. Keep kicking butt in the challenge. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Angus. All right. Well. There we go, fam. Really hope you got some value from watching this uh, final installment for this fuck dieting video series. Um, it's been awesome dropping fire and real time insights into that cranium of yours. So I hope you got some value from it. Do me a favor if you did. I'd uh, love it if you can give this video a like um, and uh, ideally share it. It would help support me. That would be awesome. Um, otherwise, yeah copy the link and share it with someone who you think could really value and benefit from watching uh, Old Man Angus Beef over here drop some fire. 
Um, and if you're not yet following me on social media, you would have heard um, yeah, me drop it in the uh, last part of the, uh, the chat. You can check me out uh, via Angus underscore carbs captain, or you can follow my personal profile for seeing heaps of burger feeds and shit about Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that, uh, which is do it for the burgers. And um, please, 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 if you are someone who knows that you've been struggling and kind of spinning wheels when it comes to this sort of stuff that me and Davo covered in this chat, um, feel free to get in touch via any of the links in the description. You can check out what my coaching is all about and get amongst some free resources and that sort of thing. Even check out some fuck dieting apparel. That'd be pretty cool. Various designs I've made there. Otherwise, big love. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time in the anti-diet TV world. Peace.